Who knows what we're going to get today? You know, it's a fast week. You know, <laughs> get it all out, you know. Make you want to fast next week, too. I saw the, uh, oh, I, oh, I was talking about the hidden mysteries and the parables. I said, oh, I was talking about the beginning of the relationship. It's obvious. You ain't got to do nothing at the honeymoon stage. Well, when the honeymoon stage wear off, guess what? Now, now the relationship starts. You have to love the individual. Now, 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 it, 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 it ain't love if you, it don't cost you nothing. If the person is being lovable, do you need any love? They got enough love for you and everybody. Normally, you got that love going to kick in when it's not a lovable situation or you don't feel like it. It's going to cost you, you. Amen. Love is not at your convenience. Right? It's probably a newsflash for some people, but, you know, put it on your wall, put it on your mirror, and remind yourself each day. It's not at your convenience. It ain't even about you at all. <laughs> no, that's going to mess some of y'all up because everything's about you. <laughs> what about my needs? You got nothing to do with love. Love is not self-seeking. 1 Corinthians 13, that's my, not my opinion. I thought I'd give you some chapter and verse just in case you're going to be in denial when you walked out the door. Right? It's not self-seeking. It's not self-seeking. I just want to make sure that I get in. It's not self-seeking. So you be driving today, you just keep hearing that in your head. It's not self-seeking. It's not self-seeking. Right? All right so, so what happens is, stay with what I was supposed to say, uh, is the, the relationship shifts to a point where you got you to gotta dig to discover what you want. To get what's going to thrill you, you got you to gotta go into the person. You got to be intimate. My wife uh, describes intimate, intimacy as into me you see. But to see into me, you got to get in it. You got, I got to be worth it enough for you to go in. Now, now, now we're starting our, our, our love relationship. Right after the honeymoon stage. All right, um, uh, what, do I, what do I have to give you here? All right, so this is the key. The key is so, so when the word came in, it became flesh and it was hidden. So now we need revelation to see it. We need uh, re- revelation is seeing what's been hidden in your vessel to be manifested. So revelation is seeing what's been hidden in your vessel to be manifested. To be manifested, right? So, so we, we want some things uh, manifested. And so, again, we talked about flesh becoming a word, so the word become flesh. And, and uh, let's go to John 15. John 15. Uh, I'm trying to do this in the time I have left. But. And, and it lines up with desires because you have the treasure hidden in your earthen vessel. So that word is coming in to manifest the treasures that's in you, but flesh has to become the word. And the only way the flesh comes in the word is you got to be saturated with it. You got to take on the fullness of Christ. All right, so look at John 15 verse. John 15 is, is wonderful. Actually, I'm a, I, I was going over some information and I realized I don't think I've ever taught it here, uh, but I will. Uh, it's a... It's a, it's a uh, Teaching called Abiding Christ. Um, um, but it's a book by Andrew Murray called Abiding Christ. First Christian book I ever read. Uh, but it was based on John 15. Um, so, uh, so I love John 15. But let's do here, uh, let's just start with verse 1. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Uh, I just realized something. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. So you're going you're gonna to deal with some cutting even when you produce stuff. It says that it may bring forth more fruit. So the cut is not to hurt you, it's to bring forth more fruit. It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Okay, so abide in me and I in you. So you should start off by saying, okay, I'm, I'm speaking some things into you. So I, so I spoke Christ to dwell in you. The word became flesh, right? He says, but abide in me and I in you as the branch uh, cannot bear fruit of itself. Remember, there's no competency of yourself. So you're not, there's nothing. Oh, well, I'll keep on reading. It's accepted to abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me remains in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, produces 
Look, listen, if a tree brings forth much fruit, what fruit is it bringing forth? See, if, if it's an orange tree, it's bringing forth what? Oranges. So the desire for the orange tree is to do what? Bring forth oranges. So what's in you will manifest if you're abiding in him, right? The desires of your heart will just start. No, we're not talking about, we said a tree. We, we should be like trees, not a stub, little branch, trees, right? All right, so let's keep going. It says, uh, uh, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. So no, 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 not a piece. Much desires, right? It says, for without me, without me, without me, you can do nothing. It didn't say a couple of things. If you read it there, John 15, 5, it says nothing. So, so if there's, there's anything good coming out of you, any fruit coming out of you, it's because what? You're connected to him, right? Because he's abiding in you. All right, so if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them in the fire, and they are burnt. Verse 7, it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So the whole thing about desires is you want to just be, I want this, I want that, like the kids, you know, I want that, you know, I want this train, I want this baseball, I want whatever, right? So, so you know, we're just God's children, that's what we're called. So we want to just say it and have it. All right, so nothing wrong with that, but he says there's a way you do it. My words got to abide in you. You have to abide in me. See, so, so the, the word became flesh. That's the, that's the word abiding in you. So flesh can become the word. You remain in him. You're submerging yourself in him. He submerged himself in you, but you submerged yourself in him. Then when you open your mouth, what's coming out? God's faith-filled words. That's the thing. And that word goes out and can't return to you void. It has to accomplish what he sent it to do. So you delight yourself in the Lord, submerge yourself in the Lord, become the word, become uh, the flesh becoming the word. It says uh, he'll give you the desires of your heart because your desires are now in line with what your purpose to fulfill. Your desires are not self-seeking. Your timing is not your timing. Your timing is his. Because you're submerged in him. The, the challenge is when you're not submerged in him, you can get impatient, anxious. Right? So, so the thing, the, the challenge with anxiousness is not that, you, it still doesn't mean you, you can't do it. It means that God won't get the fullness out of it. So you may do it successfully for 10, 17, or whatever, whatever years, but God may want to carry generations of it being done. Uh, we were talking the, uh, the other day and I was saying, even what God wants to do in, do in his church. I mean, you have all different types of churches. I'm not against nobody else's church. But there's a ministry, uh, 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 Rhema, it's called Rhema. And uh, so the founder, uh, Kenneth Hagen Sr., uh, I mean, he had a vision. And everybody tied into the vision, and they built a, a huge ministry and school and all types of stuff. I mean, and there's thousands of pastors and churches all over the country that came out of that ministry. So that ministry has saturated throughout the world. That's it over the country, I'm sorry, all over the world. But it all started with him, them establishing a particular foundation and then it just elevated. And I remember when people would say they graduated from uh, the rank <coughs> school and they started a church, people would flock to that church. Oh, they, they was at Raymond? And they graduated from there? Oh, I already know what they bring, and I'm going to that church. All they had to say was they were a rhema, but, I mean, because it was, his ministry was about faith. It was about power. And the thing is, uh, being about faith is not talking about faith. It's living faith. It's, you're not in control. Now, I'm going to teach a message on uh, Saturday at the, uh, unless the Lord changes it, at the, the, I don't know, conference or whatever they call it, that me and my wife are going to be at Saturday, called Out of Control. Yeah, we got to let go of the controls so we can really see what God is for us. You can't give yourself the best that you need. Only God can do that. All right, so, all right, so let's, let's get back to what I was saying about, so I gave you John 15, uh, 7. 
See, see, this is so if you abide me, your words abide in you. If you, if you abide me, flesh becoming the word, my words abide in you, word becoming flesh, it says you can ask what you will and shall be done to me. So the, the results would be um, manifested treasures. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 8 9, and you can see how this theme is all through the Bible. Uh, but hopefully you'll be able to see it this week because you spend so much time with God. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. It says, uh, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says that through that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That through his poverty you might be rich. So now look, that scripture starts out with Christ being rich. And then it says, becoming poor. The word poor means to be without. So rich means to be with. So he, he was with. Then he, this, he gave of himself to be without. So we could be with, right? Yeah, 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 you, you follow me there. So, so, so Christ was dwelling with God and he was rich. He came to dwell in us and became poor, right? So that we might dwell with God to be rich. So he was with God. He became flesh, became poor without. So that we, we might be with God, right? The flesh becoming the work. Okay, let's, okay, let's give you another one. Uh, Galatians 3. It's the same thing in our, we was talking about the couples and how you get through the honeymoon stage. And when you get through the honeymoon stage, you, uh, you got you to gotta go deeper into the relationship. Otherwise, it's not a relationship. It's just, you know, I enjoyed you for the moment. Now, once the newness wears off, I want to, you know, discard you. Um, but we're saying how you got to, you know, you got to go deeper. Same thing in your relationship with God. You got to keep going deeper. He said you got to get past the sincere milk of the word and get into the meat. Like he, he said doctrines of baptisms and laying on our hands. Like to him, he was like, that's basic. He said, you way beyond that now, right? Ever since you got into the relationship with me, you just kept on growing. Because you was getting deeper. I was so important to you. You just kept on discovering more and more about me and more and more about me. And then more that you discovered, the more I, 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 I poured into you. And then the more deeper you got, the more I poured into you. And then the deeper you got. That's how we rolling because you, you say you love me. But you, can't, you couldn't possibly be loving me if you're, you're, you're going deeper into Facebook and some other things. He didn't say don't, 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 don't read Facebook. But you're going deeper into you, you know all the stats, all the players. Do you know all my miracles? This is so, so he's like, so you're saying you love me, and I, I hear what you say with your mouth, but how, if you didn't tell me that with your mouth, how would I know? As soon as you get uncomfortable, you ain't got no time for me. That's going deeper with me? Same thing with the word. I, I said that because it's with the word. So you, you, you want to get beyond the, the logos. Logos is the, the surface word, the written word. It's, it's, it's the challenge I had when I first started reading the Bible. I was like, what are these black and white words going to do for me? I got real issues. Okay, yeah, thou this, whatever. You know, I was a little idiot. Um, but that's kind of how I was rolling. But when I started getting deeper, then I started to cross over into what they call rhema. The revelation of the word. I started seeing stuff. I was like, that was there all the time? It's more, hey, hey, uh, what is, what is uh, uh, Rafiki told uh, Simba? Look harder. <laughs> he says, got to look harder. Rightly divide that word. She says, rightly divide the word of truth. You got to dissect that thing. You got to break it down. It has to be in you. You have to be saturated with it. It has to, um, that's the only way it's going to remain. Revelation don't remain just because you got information and it, it, it tweaks you that day or you agreed in the moment. You've already proved that. You know, heard something, you go, oh my God, what was I thinking? And walked right out the door and did exactly what you heard not to do. Not because you, you trying to be rebellious. It's because now you got to chew on that thing. You got to marinate on that thing. It has to be real to you. You can't say this week, you know what, Lord? I'm trusting you with everything, finances and everything. I'm tied in at a whole nother level. And then as soon as the bill come up, you go, uh, let's start this next week. 